Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so now we will discuss uh, employment unemployment and unemployment related different uh, concepts terminologies those things okay so uh, as we mentioned in our past lecture in an, in an economy two overall macroeconomic related two uh, important drawbacks rather okay or bothering uh, things are there to the any policy makers or country authority one is inflation another is unemployment ok so these are the very important macroeconomic uh, picture macroeconomic uh, phenomena of an country uh, which bother uh, the policy makers or country's authority uh, very much ok one is inflation if inflation uh, increases very or inflation becomes very high ok it is it is a botheration what is inflation and all those things we have discussed now unemployment why unemployment is a problem in a country say if unemployment means what joblessness no people are searching for job but they are not getting job right so say i am unemployed means i i i, I want to do uh, some job or i want to i am willing to sell my labor power whatever is there in the labor market but nobody no taker or no hirer is available there in the labor market who can absorb me as a as an employee and as a result i can get some job right so i understand that if i am an unemployed person you are an unemployed person okay it will be a problematic for my family your family and so on right we will face some hardship to maintain our families uh, subsistence right because we, we need certain income to to live okay to purchase uh, goods and services consuming which we can we can spend uh, uh, basic subsistence right uh, so uh, so that is a problematic thing for the person individual level who is getting unemployed okay but why this will be a problem for the entire country's point of view look in the earlier chapter uh, before uh, this lecture we have discussed that uh, human capital right human capital and in important resource which has positive contribution over productivity right and it's an important resource for production activity in an, any country right now that human uh, resource i have a human resource people who have uh, who are unemployed all of them have some human resource i have some training right i have some um, training i earn certain training to teach to people right but i am not getting any job so the kind of skill i acquired through my education and training right that skill i am not able to utilize right as a result through my skill whatever human develop or human capital i have that human capital is country is not or the entire economy is not able to employ or utilize that human capital as a result my country uh, is uh, losing some opportunity of getting some productive activity by my participation which i could generate right so that is why when lot of productive resources lot of people who are productive who are capable to participate in production activities if they got unemployed essentially that country is one important productive resource called human labor or human capital is getting wasted is not uh, our country is unable to employ th that those important productive resources into the production activities so that country is losing or uh, losing some kind of total product what it could produce otherwise if it could be able to employ these people okay so definitely if unemployment rate is very high or as unemployment rate is more and more it is not only problematic or it's 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 it brings hardship to the respective people who are unemployed from the overall country's point of view also country lose some opportunity of attaining higher level of standard of living higher level of overall production okay right so unemployment is basically joblessness now so now the first question is how we will measure unemployment in every if you if you look at the business newspaper no 
you will see that it's a frequent uh, frequently you will see that business newspaper or regular newspaper no general kind of newspaper has a dedicated page called business page right if you look at there it's frequently inflation it is this inflation is becoming or price level is growing very fast inflation is very high people people are unhappy like that uh, last few months no petrol price that gasoline gasoline price no petrol diesel all these petroleum products price increases like anything right almost on a daily basis it was increasing okay maybe one month back or two months back petrol price was around 80 rupee per liter now it is around 100 rupees per liter in india okay so so when this price level increases no it brings more hardship to the people because petroleum is an essential good essential uh, consumable goods uh, through which we live right and once say, diesel price is increased what will happen it will be it will have its implication over the market price of all different commodities because transportation is involved right say wholesale market and retail market uh, who are the retailer who are the business people know they are purchasing goods and services from the wholesale market and they are keeping the, that in their retail stores we are visiting there and we are purchasing so from wholesale market to re retail market right uh, they have to carry those products what they are purchasing they have to carry through the carrier maybe truck and those kinds of big big carriers if diesel price increases cost of transportation will increase because these trucks, bus, big big vehicle are mostly uh, their fuel is diesel. Okay. So, this petrol products if increases, no, it has cascading effect on the price level of all different kind, uh, different kind of products. Not only that the vehicle two wheeler what I am driving, it, its fuel is becoming more costly. Other fuels also it has a cascading effect on the price level of different other commodities transportation cost has in, uh, will be increasing and so on right so that is why inflation is a is a bother bother some kind of thing and usually in the business newspaper or regular newspaper business page you will see that uh, inflation is this much inflation is that much and frequently almost almost uh, say uh, twice thrice in a week some report will be there you will see okay exactly that way unemployment report will be also there okay this is the rate of unemployment now okay this is the rate of unemployment now so when we are telling rate of unemployment say three percent rate of unemployment is there in a country say united states say india i do not know exactly what is the unemployment rate now in india say suppose that is say 15 percent suppose by 15 percent what we refer do you think that this 15 percent is basically the 15 percent of total population of india is unemployed no so we have to understand when we are telling 15 percent is the un unemployment rate, this 15 percent of which population, whether entire country's population or a fraction of that, right? So, that related certain terminologies let us introduce one by one, okay? So, in a country, in a country, suppose this is the total population of a country, okay? Out of that, a section of the population are minor 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 means what you know that right in india right majority age right when a, 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 a child become or uh, uh, become major or become adult right you know that i think uh, for uh, male or boys it is 21 years and for girls it is 18 years something like that it is there in india okay so people whose age is lower than that threshold limit those are called minor people Okay. So, entire population we can break into two broader groups. One group is minor and another this group is basically adult population, adult population. Okay. This adult population, this you can so, so I am telling uh, this, this red is the minor thing of the entire population that we are living. Now, among the adult population, we can have three different categories. One is basically not in the labor market, not in the labor market. Okay. Certain adult people are there who are not in the labor market. Who are they? Okay. Of course, students, right? Full time students like you people, right? You people are studying 
some of you are already crossed that uh, adult uh, that threshold level of age right, but still you are full time studying. So, you are not searching for any job or anything. So, you are not in the labor market exactly very senior citizens who uh, who already retired from their job ok they are not searching for any more job right those are also they are adult population ok. So, full time uh, students very senior citizens who are already retired from their job th those are sometimes uh, ref uh, referred as uh, retirees retirees who were who are already retired from their job ok and the house uh, household uh, means uh, homemakers like my mother right uh, many of your mother okay they are they are doing uh, full time they are managing uh, household activities right cooking they are sometimes washing our cloth your cloth her cloth also like that no in a, in a within a household lot of works are there right and mostly mother auntie these kinds of people they used to uh, although they have enough training many of them have enough training ok they can search for job they can get some employment but many of them are willingly or voluntarily are not searching for job and they are happy to maintain your uh, household or works whatever activities are required within an household they are happy to maintain that right. So, those people are also not in the labor market ok or not in the labor force. So, out of the adult population right entire adult population who are not in the labor market that also we are removing. So, now this portion is there. So, out of this portion suppose this sector is employed employed and this section is unemployed. So, when we tell 15 percent is unemployment rate, so number of people who are unemployed as a proportion of total labor force ok labor force. So, so total population that we can break into two groups adult population adult population plus minors. Now, adult population also we can break into two groups largely two groups ok not in labor force not in labor force that full time uh, students uh, people who are uh, full time uh, homemaker and the retirees those are not in labor force and in labor force. Okay. In India suppose uh, now uh, Indian total population is say uh, 140 crore suppose suppose 140 crore out of that suppose say uh, 30 crore 140 crore is the total population suppose out of that 30 crore are minor ok. So, definitely 110 crore are adult. So, these are minor this is total population. So, this is 110 crore is the adult population, adult population ok. Out of this 110 crore suppose say 80 crore in the labor force and remaining 30 crores are not in labor force. This 30 crore is basically that not in labor force means that full time let me repeat again full time students, homemakers and retirees that group together is suppose 30 crore ok. So, 80 crore population is in the labor force when we are telling 15 percent is the rate of unemployment that means 15 percent of this 80 crore population is unemployed understood. So, so so, unemployment rate, unemployment rate, this is basically number of 
unemployed by total labor force L A B O U R labor force into 100 if you do that many percentage that is coming 15 percent if it is 15 percent unemployment rate in India. Okay. Another important concept is called labor force participation rate, labor force participation rate. that is basically people in labor force people in labor force by adult population into 100 that many percentage like in the earlier page whatever example we gave labor for participation rate will be 80 crore by 110 crore so a 80 by 110 that will be the labor force participation rate because 110 is the total adult population out of that 80 crore are searching for job or many of them already got job many of them did not get job they are unemployed ok. So, in that way so two important concepts we are getting labor force participation rate people in the labor market or labor force as a proportion of total adult population unemployment rate number of unemployed people in total labor force. Okay, not in total adult population, neither in, in total or overall population. Okay. So, these are the important concepts how to interpret when we tell that India and say a particular country is now uh, unemployment rate is say 15 percent or 10 percent or 20 percent. That 20 percent of what? 20 percent of total labor force, okay, which is a fraction of adult population of that country. Okay. This is the thing unemployment rate. Now, unemployment related certain concepts we are calling one is called natural rate of unemployment, natural rate of unemployment. What is that? If you natural rate of unemployment, if you if you see the unemployment rate uh, diagram of a country over time over long period say suppose in Indian unemployment rate diagram. Uh, uh, say uh, this is suppose this this point is 1950 and this point is suppose 2020 2020 so last 70 years last 70 71 years what is indian unemployment rate so this side horizontal axis we are measuring the time point and vertical axis say unemployment rate unemployment rate we are measuring so you will see that if we measure you will see that this kind of and graph is fluctuating roughly this way it is going ok. So, you will see that roughly there is this kind of on an average in the law for the entire period ok. This is roughly some fixed unemployment rate is there and actual unemployment rate from different time to time it is fluctuating around that. Sometimes it is going little bit above, sometimes it is going little bit low below in that way. So, the rate which is the this flat line around which short run unemployment is fluctuating that rate is called natural rate of unemployment. This natural rate of unemployment means it is not that desired or it is it, this kind of unemployment is coming from nat naturally generating within the society, it is not that way rather it is referring that long run level of unemployment, it is uh, staying there for for the entire this kind this many 70 years 71 years this many longer period of time quite huge time point some set of basic unemployment rate is there ok. Now say suppose this is say, suppose 7 percent suppose sometimes it is becoming 15 percent Indian unemployment rate sometimes it is going down to the 5 percent and so on. So, 15 percent 5 percent 25 percent what we are doing all these are basically fluctuating around a very stable long run unemployment rate suppose that is 7 percent. So, this 7 percent is called natural rate of unemployment ok. Natural rate of unemployment basically we are referring that unemployment rate which will which will be there in the long run even within a country ok for the longer period ok that is called natural rate of unemployment ok. Now, two uh, more other other type of unemployment we can clarify one is called structural unemployment structural unemployment and 
vis a vis se frictional unemployment frictional unemployment so these two concepts structural unemployment and frictional unemployment these are basically from the source of unemployment how unemployment arises from that source if we classify if we if we look into then you will get these two types of unemployment rate okay one is called fictional unemployment another is called structural unemployment but let me clarify one thing when we are telling that unemployment okay that is we are referring that involuntary unemployment means people voluntary means what job is there i can i can participate i can be employed but i am not looking for job so in that way if i become unemployed it is called voluntary unemployment i am becoming or i am getting unemployed voluntarily okay so when what unemployment is bothering to the uh, is a, is a, is a, is a problematic uh, things uh, to the country's authority definitely involuntary unemployment where people are searching for job but they are not getting job okay so that unemployment we are talking about in this course or in this uh, lecture okay now frictional unemployment is what friction friction you know right friction means there is a you are going to something but there is an obstacle that creates some friction right friction is a scientific uh, concepts all of you are uh, students you are you are most of you are engineering student it is quite uh, uh, familiar to you this terminology friction so some unemployment arises due to friction what is that friction friction in mind so suppose after your graduation right you are getting immediately some placement okay and you are getting that one say uh, 1 lakh rupee per year that kind of not very lucrative job but some job you are uh, some job offer you got where salary is 1 lakh rupee per year okay so you are thinking that no kind of kind of capacity kind of training kind of qualification i have i am expecting little bit more right so you are searching for a better job okay but that today this offer came to you means they will tell that say within next 3 months or within next 5 months some time they will give within that time you join okay so what you are doing you are not immediately joining rather although within 5 months you can join you can join today also as soon as you got the offer letter in your hand but you are delaying little bit 2 months 3 months you are delaying and that 2 months 3 months you are waiting for perhaps because you applied so many other places also right so you are expecting that some uh, some uh, job offer may come from some better place right so suppose that job offer for that better job offer you are waiting for 3 months and after 3 months you uh, you you join this company that means first 3 months which you could join that company but you did not okay or, or with the optimistic uh, hope or with the hope that some better uh, offer may come from some other place right so that 3 months you were unemployed that unemployment is fictional unemployment because you could join immediately you intentionally delayed that for 3 months that delay came from the friction in your mind whether to join or wait a little bit for a better that kind of thing so when that kind of due to friction in job seekers mind the temporary short time period uh, they becomes unemployed or they get uh, unemployed okay that kind of unemployment is called frictional unemployment i hope you understood that frictional term is com coming from where another unemployment which is called structural unemployment what is that structural unemployment the the economy's overall situation is such that economy is unable to provide the job to the all the job seekers that is called structural unemployment means economy structural bottlenecks are there in the economy okay so where people will get ab absorbed okay if some factories are there or productive kind of uh, bases are there agricultural fields are there when they are looking for uh, employees large large factories are there they are looking for employees offices are there they are looking for employees and so on and so employees will be absorbed there offices all these productive uh, different productive sectors right now this amount of productive sector whatever is there in a country that is not sufficient to supply the job to all the job seekers then it is called structural unemployment 
why structural because entire country is structurally so uh, deficient to provide job to all the job seekers that is why it is called structural unemployment ok. Now, let us discuss what are the reason of structural unemployment, what are the factors which are responsible for structural unemployment to arise. See frictional unemployment is a short period unemployment no as we understand the definition of frictional unemployment, but what is the structural unemployment it is a it is a bother something to the society right because uh, not enough job is available in the society. So, what government or society uh, policy makers or the uh, authority of that country can do they can do more investment, they can, they can uh, construct more factories and also on, so that more people can be absorbed there as employees right. So, those kinds of investment and all those are required to reduce that structural unemployment or employment opportunity should be created by uh, opening up new, uh, new sectors where uh, employee can be absorbed, absorbed right. So, what are the factors for structural unemployment to arise? Three factors are there. One is called say minimum wage law. You know that we have discussed that suppose this is the labor market situation, this is the demand for labor, this is the supply of labor. So, if this is the demand for labor, this is the supply of labor, this side wage rate and this side the amount of labor, quantity of labor L we are measuring, this is origin. So, if you allow that suppose this is the situation demand supply situation of labor in a in a country say India. So, if you allow this labor market to operate freely this will be the market clearing wage rate at which uh, the people everybody or market will clear ok equilibrium wage rate right. Now, suppose in that country this is the minimum wage law. So, by the country's law legal authority is telling that nobody is allowed to employ any employee in any wage below this level. So, as a, as a result what will happen at that wage that this many people will look for job, but only this many job uh, uh, employer are there who are looking for this many employees only because wage rate is very high. So, as a result this red color area this kind this distance will be unemployed ok because this many people are searching for job only they are getting the job. So, these people are not getting the job they are unemployed look at here this unemployment because the labor market amount of demand for job is there ok supply of job is more as a result all the people who are the job seekers they uh, or employer could not be able to employ all the job seekers. So, definitely this kind of minimum wage law or more specifically binding minimum wage law is a responsible factor for uh, structural unemployment right. Another responsible factor for structural unemployment is union and collective bargaining. What is that union and collective every factory every working place there is a employees unions are there right that is legally allowed by any democratic country in any democratic country's authority right. So, so uh, what they union do because if I, I bargain or negotiate about my uh, benefits employment benefits not only wage, wage uh, number of leaves, number of say uh, health benefit all those things whatever one employees used to get from an employer right. So, if I bargain with those aspects with my employer vis a vis if 10 of employees like us we are jointly bargaining our bargaining power will be increased. Okay, we can more more strongly bargain with the employer, employer usually are very powerful. Okay. So, that is why employees unionize okay. and through that union they used to bargain with the employers okay, for different uh, employment related benefits, maybe wage, maybe some other benefits, leave benefits and all those things right. So, when union collectively bargaining with the employer for more benefit employee em, employee related benefit right. So, definitely employer that employing those employ em, uh, those, those people is more costly is becoming more costly to the employer that will create this kind of structural unemployment again. Although wage rate is not that much high, but they are de deserving or they are asking for uh, more number of say leave in a year. So, definitely 
employer will consider what? What is the working days you are you are serving for that country or for that for that factory, right? So definitely, per uh, working day is becoming more more costly. Okay, so because uh, earlier uh, wage rate say uh, five thousand rupees in thirty uh, thirty days, right? In uh, uh, not thirty days, say twenty five days. You are eligible as an employee. You are eligible to take five days leave per month. Suppose that is the figure. Now, employee union they bargain for no, no, no. Leave should be seven days. So where where five thousand rupees you are getting paid for twenty five days work, now it will be twenty three days work. So wage rate per day per labour hour day, right? It is increasing. Labour day it is increasing, right? Effectively. So that is becoming more costly. Employing employee employee is becoming more costly to the employer. As a result, structural unemployment can arise. Okay. Another thing is that called efficiency wage. Efficiency wage. What is that? Sometimes it happen that employer, for its own betterment, trying to increase the wage rate, uh, keep the wage rate more. Why? See, look at here. Employer know that if my employees are more uh, healthy people, they will be more productive. Okay, and this labor class, working class, no, usually whatever income they have, almost that entire portion of that they have to spend for their subsistence. So they don't have much money left over to invest in their health, then take care of for their better health and all those things. So sometimes employer try to increase wage rate so that employees can can maintain their better health also so that they will be more healthy as a result they can put uh, more effectively or more productive way they can uh, engage into production okay so that way so 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 that is called health health so these are basically four factors we are discussing quickly for which Employer can increase the wage rate little bit, and if employer increase the exactly the same way, structural unemployment will arise. Why are those reasons? That one is the employee's health condition. Okay, employer can consider that healthy workers will be more productive that way. Okay, then job job quit job quit. Say after your graduation, if you if you get an appointment letter in a factory, right? You will see that first three months or first four months, you have to be apprentice there. You have to go through certain training. Okay. After that training, you will be uh, or through that training, employer is making you workable in that particular factory. So training period period also they have to pay wage rate to you, right? Uh, salary to you. So as a result, when one established employee leave one leave one factory, no, it is costly to that factory because it has to hire another job as a, another person as a replacement. It has to again give three four months training. Training period is what when you are not contributing to any production of that factory, but you are going through some essential uh, knowledge gain. How to run that machine? How to do this work, that work, and so on. Right. So these kinds of again new. If I have to hire another new person, I have to give him training, and that training period I have to pay him without any contribution from his side to my production. So one established employee who will leave some job, it is costlier to the employer. So to reduce that possibility, employer usually increase the wage rate. So if I increase wage rate, no, that is will be. Uh, making my employees to possibility to less for bet searching for better job somewhere else, right? So that is job quitting kind of thing. Better, better pool. What is that better pool? Say uh, before the employing say employee of an organization, right? I I have put some advertisement. That advertisement I am telling that that uh, the cadar. For which I am searching for employees, that their monthly income will be, their monthly salary will be say fifty thousand rupees. Instead of that, if I give the advertisement say seventy thousand rupees, that more wage that will attract more better quality labor, better quality employee, right? So when wage that I am increasing to attract better quality people, 
okay and as better quality people will join my company or my factory or my production base right productivity will increase because they are more trained their technical know how is more and so on right so be, to attract better pool of employees sometimes employer increase their wage rate on employer side okay and another thing is that okay uh, to more effort more effort okay say all of you perhaps uh, have watched that uh, modern times on a great movie by charlie chaplin okay you will see that 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 manager of that factory you know he installed certain machines or cameras here and there so that people can't gossip people can't waste their working time right so basically suppose uh, i am uh, say worker what they what is their perspective they can Uh, gossip they can waste their time and not putting enough effort what is expected from them to to be employed to the or to be uh, to be uh, to be uh, employing in the production activity right now suppose my in my factory i am keeping uh, wage rate is very high and there is a checks and balance if you are caught that you are wasting your time your job may be uh, terminated right so if i give less effort to my job okay my and, and eventually I, i get caught my job can be terminated now suppose when my salary is 50000 per rupees uh, per month v service 80000 per month that cost of termination is more when my salary is more if i get caught i will lose 80000 rupees v service 50000 rupees right so if i increase from the employer side if i increase the employees wage rate more okay so employees is seeing that i should put more effort otherwise if i caught i get caught right uh, my opportunity cost will be much more costly earlier case i could lose 50000 per month when my wage rate is 80000 if i get caught i will get uh, i will lose 80000 per month so it will be more costly to me so if employer side if employer increase the wage rate employer is seeing that it will be becoming or firing or getting fired is more costly will be more costly to the employee side so then employees will be uh, will be trying to provide more and more effort to the working culture or working working that um, uh, work process right so for for these factors right uh, employers sometimes increase their job i will quickly finish that in your in your uh, uh, ten principle we told that uh, short run there is a short run trade off between inflation and un unemployment in fact if you plot unemployment rate unemployment rate in the horizontal axis and rate of inflation in the vertical axis rate of inflation in the vertical axis we will get this kind of downward sloping line which is actually telling that there is a short run in uh, short run trade off between inflation and unemployment short run trade off means downward sloping one is increasing to another is falling okay so this curve is called phillips curve very important concept phillips curve okay and this is the short run fluctuation around this many employment so this is called natural rate of unemployment natural rate of unemployment so short run trade off what is there between inflation and unemployment it's a downward sloping curve that curve is called phillips curve okay because actually in um, british economist phillips who first observed this kind of behavior in macroeconomics okay in english economy and uk economy right so in the name of him this is called phillips curve and phillips curve where it is cutting in the horizontal axis so because horizontal axis we are measuring unemployment rate so that rate of unemployment is called natural rate of unemployment what we have what we have shown here this rate like 7% we told like that okay so let us stop here so phillips curve is very important concept it is there in your book please go through and all these concepts of related to employment unemployment and all let us stop here we will uh, we will uh, start another afresh uh, discussion maybe banking and financial system of a country maybe next lecture let us stop here